Hello, um, welcome uh, to our presentation about the digitization of uh, PD onboarding and approval process. Um, this, this is sponsored by the Los Angeles County uh, Public Defenders. Uh, I'll go ahead and get started by introducing uh, them. Uh, first off, some information about them is that they are widely considered the finest client-centered criminal defense firm in the nation, uh, working to reduce incarceration and the collateral consequences of contact by 2025 for criminals. And they provide treatment courts, uh, juvenile advocacy, immigration, mental health assistance mainly. And they are also trying to give back to the community by representing minorities that are often overlooked. <clears throat> and um, some more information is that they have 32 offices uh, located throughout the whole country uh, with teams of more than uh, 1,200 employees, uh, 700 attorneys, and uh, staff composed of paralegals, investigators, psychiatric, social workers, and admin and support staff. Um, so this kind of data shows that uh, there's a need for a good IT system for the, these kind of people doing important work, which is why uh, we are uh, tasked with this uh, goal. So um, initially we had uh, a project of migrating their legacy content into uh, um, a database using Salesforce. Uh, currently this project is on hold because their IT staff is busy with uh, a different system. So we are currently uh, doing a different kind of project where it's an online and employee contractor enrollment application and allows users to request for um, forms that we generated and with uh, the Adobe Sign API, and it will be converted into AP, uh, into PDFs for the users to sign. And then the PDF, once the user signs the PDF, it will be saved into a database. And uh, moving on. With our initial project, uh, we used Trailhead to learn about Salesforce. And through Salesforce, we learned how to import and export files into our applications, create schemas to model that data, and later deploy customized apps from the Salesforce App Store. Next. Uh, since Salesforce is, a, is based on a shared cloud platform, it allows us to install applications or packages other users have created and deploy them into our own application. Within our own application, we learned how to limit access to users by creating a hierarchy in our own organization, organization to help prevent clients from viewing or editing unnecessary da data. Next. All right, so next up is how the enrollment application will work. Uh, so first off, the Angular app will be used in order to submit both employee and contractor requests. With that being said, this includes the request status page where the user will have the ability to look up certain fields and where the requester will receive a request ID. After the backend side of the project, we'll uh, retrieve and store the entered request details into the database, which leads to the creation of an employee folder into the database. Uh, next slide. Right. So afterwards, corresponding forms that were requested by the user will be generated within Adobe Sign, where all the previously entered information by the user will be autofilled into the document. After the first initial review and signing from the main user, the generated document will be sent to other appropriate requesters for another review and for mm. their electronic signature. Once all of those forms have been signed, the document is then sent back into the database. Next slide. Now the requirements regarding this project. So first thing that has to be met is that the project must be must be developed with a custom form using AngularJS to capture employee or contractor information. Some of those typical fields that would be included um, are the user's first name, last name, address, requester emails, and others. The next requirement would be a request status page within the Angular app, which would include fields such as um, a person's request ID, uh, their employee ID, and their first and last name. And just from reading off of this slide, other requirements would involve having a request being recorded and an entry being added in the database upon form submission, values inputted into PDS, PDF templates generating the other appropriate forms and inputting those values to those new forms, uh, sending the generated and filled out form to the requester for review, uh, allowing the requester to review, prep, and send forms to others for review, and upon completion, storing the documents. 
next. All right, so as you can see here, there's the overall system architecture diagram. Um, so the web application consists of a front end and a back end. So we start with the user in the top left, which, which are employees and contractors. So they mainly interact with the HTML template. So that's, how, that's where they make requests and receive responses to the web application. Um, so from the front end, the HTML template interacts with Angular components. The HTTP client model mainly interacts with the backend. So when the user interacts with like the buttons, um, the next button and the submit, the HTTP, the HTTP client model sends these um, responses and requests to the backend. And once the backend receives service requests from front end, it models the data in Java, stores in, and then stores it in relational database. And then after that, the database keeps data in storage and it sends requested data to the model the backend. And then the next slide just shows you the text summary of what I just explained. And yeah. The purpose of our backend system is to perform the program's functionality by transferring data between the client side and the system's database and arranging data in the database. Our backend system relies on a few frameworks to achieve that goal. First, Spring Boot, which is a Java-based Spring framework. Spring Boot has many built-in libraries and very flexible configurations, which makes it a very useful framework for writing REST ABI applications. Another framework that we use is Hibernate, which is another Java-based framework. Hibernate can easily map data from Java classes to database tables by providing a mapping interface between the two. Next slide. Next, I'm going to talk about the front end system. The goal of our front end system is to minimize the complexity of the program and provide a simple interface for the client to interact with the program. Our front end system accomplishes that goal by using Angular and Bootstrap. Angular is a component based framework that is used to create single page applications. It's very easy to build user interfaces with Angular because the user interface is composed of organized reusable components. Reusability is a key advantage in Angular because Angular allows us to define components once and reuse them through our application. Also, the Angular material library provides various tools that allows us to design creative web pages. Another framework that we used was Bootstrap, which is a CSS framework that is used for developing responsive websites and applications. Next slide. Finally, finally, I'm going to discuss our achievements and the result of our final product this semester. First, I'll discuss the front end achievements. The front end system now has a better user interface, which was achieved by adding attractive colors and animations and adding user friendly elements, such as steppers, drop down menus, and search boxes. Also, the user interface now has helpful functionality, such as input validation, saving draft requests, and providing IDs for each request. Next, I'll discuss the backend system achievements this semester. This, the backend system now connects with Adobe Sign, which is a tool used to easily sign and manipulate documents. The backend system now has Adobe Sign functions to send a stored request to Adobe Sign to be signed. Finally, I'll discuss other important achievements this semester. We implemented an admin system that allows admins to review and edit the requests and start the signing process by submitting them to Adobe Sign to be signed. Our most important achievement this semester is that we were able to make the front end and the back end systems communicate with each other. Now the front end system can send the request to the back end system where they get stored in a database and the back end system responds by sending the appropriate data and updates to the front end system to be displayed to the user. Next slide. Okay, now I'm gonna pass it on to the demo team to present our application. All right, so this is the Angular application. Um, this is the application that the employees and contractors will be using to fill out their information. So when the request first goes to the web page, they will be greeted with two options, either one to start a form or to continue 
it, uh, it forms a thirty in progress. So we will start by starting a new form. So when the user clicks the button, they will be asked it whether they're an employee or contractor. For this case, we will use employee. So as you can see, we're using a stepper. So this makes um, filling out the form a little um, more digestible in the way that they won't have to fill out a long form. It'll be done in steps. So I'll fill out a sample form here. So the user will enter their information and then go through the steps and enter the rest. And then they will be asked whether what applications they would like. For this for this case, we will just use internet access. And then this is where they input their manager's information. So when the user submits their form, the manager will get an email telling them that the form has been submitted and this will allow them to look over it. So when the user is done submitting their information, they'll be greeted with a page that will let them look over the form. If they spot a mistake, all they have to do is click on the tab and they'll be redirected. So once the user is done, they will click submit. And then they will get their reference number. So if the user would like to continue a form, they can, all they would need is this number. So as we can see, this is the, the user that submitted the form. They will also get an email giving them their number. And the reason why this number is given is in case they want to continue making changes, all they would have to do is put in their request number. And then they would retrieve their form and continue. So now I would like to pass it on to Tabasuma. So when the requester um, also submits uh, the form, the admin will also receive an email. And this email will have the requester name, the request number, and also a link to the admin homepage where they could log in. So once the admin logs in, they'll see uh, this page, the service request page. This um, basically shows all the list of all the request. And as you can see, it shows the request number and the request status, which is, which could mean from being, being, a, being in draft mode to a submit for admin review, and also includes to showing that the request, um, the Adobe sign process has been started. It also shows the name of the requester and a button to uh, start the review. And this also shows a list of um, signing events where it shows if a manager has signed the request. So once they press the review button, the admin could um, start the review process and they could also um, save and come back later to finish the process if they aren't finished. So as you can see, they could um, edit. And this page is where the admin code select participants uh, for managers or department heads to sign the request. And this is optional, so you don't have to select every uh, field. Now, once, this, uh, once the admin uh, presses this button, then the Adobe sign process will be started.
Now, as you can see, the request status has changed since um, it's out for the e signatures. And also once it's been submitted, um, they can't uh, review the process anymore. And once, if you click the signing events, you will see all the list of all the events. So you could see that the Adobe sign event has been created and also it's out for signatures. Now I'll pass it on to Adelia. I'll be showing another functionality that the admin user has. An admin user is able to manage approvers. After clicking on the manage approvers button, uh, they'll be redirected to a page where, where they can add or delete approvers or update approver information. In the existing approvers tab, they can edit or delete current approvers. To do this, um, just select an approver role from the drop down menu and then select one of the existing approvers. Um, they can now edit any of the fields. And when they click update, the changes will be saved. In the new approvers tab, an admin user can add an approver. So each field should be properly filled in. And clicking add should now add that new approver. If we go to existing approvers, and look for the newly created approver, you'll see it's displayed right here. And to delete an approver, um, you just need to click the delete button. And now if we go to look for them, we see that they have been removed. Um, I'll now be handing it over to Javier for the next part of the demo. Okay, so once the admin approves the initial request that was submitted by the uh, requester user, the initial requester is sent an email from Adobe sign saying that their signature is requested on the agreement document that was created. So if we click on this here, we can see that the user the, or the original requester was sent an invitation to go to Adobe sign and review the document as well as sign it. So if you click this button here, you'll be led to Adobe sign. And we can see a document here that has information that's been plugged in from the uh, app that we created. And really the only thing that the user would have to do at this point is to sign their name. So in this case, uh, it would be Adrian. And then the process from here is pretty simple where you continue to click the next button and just simply click where your signature is required all the way to the bottom of the document and then click to sign at the bottom. Now at this point, it would go to the next person in line, which is the manager. So if we go to the manager's email here or the one that we used, lacpdtestmanager at gmail.com, uh, then in a few moments, we should get an email from Adobe Sign inviting us to the platform. And there it is. So if we go to the link here, we'll see something similar where these fields have been already filled out by the initial requester. And then down below, we have additional fields that would have to be completed by the manager. So in this case, John Doe. And of course, at this point, they could also change their phone number and their name or any other fields that are associated with them just in case they notice anything's off. So we'll just continue clicking next, uh, just as we did earlier, all the way to the bottom of the document. So I believe there's six signatures for the manager and then we'll send it through. So at this point, it would uh, be sent off to the third person in line 
which I believe would either be the div chief or the department head. But we won't go to that stage because from here on, it's pretty similar as far as uh, what these participants are doing on Adobe Sign. So let's quickly take a look at the app that we set up here. So if we look at the page of service requests, we can look at the uh, signing events here. If we click on this button, we'll see that the events have been updated for this particular request. And we can see that most recently it's been uh, sent out for signature to this person here, which is accurate. This would be the third person in line. And one more thing, if we go to the Adobe Sign platform and refresh, we can see that this agreement is in progress. Uh, two out of the four participants have completed the agreements. And when it's all done, it would go right here to the completed tab on Adobe Sign. So that would be the entire beginning to end process for a service request on our uh, platform. Thanks for watching our presentation. And let me see if I can figure out how to stop the recording. Thank you.